All right, everybody, welcome to B.O. Boys for Monday, March 11th. Fuck it, it's a raw feed. We're doing it live. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. Clayton, we are at the same table right now. We are sitting across from each other in my dining room in New York City, and we both just watched the Academy Awards together. We both watched the Oscars. And I think we're going to get to the box office, of course. We're going to get to this Kung Fu Panda, this incredible number, this incredible hold for Dune Part 2, second weekend. But we've got to start off, start off talking about the Academy Awards. And listen, let's just be honest. We've had a few. Cheers. Cheers. We've had a few. God, you got a glass of water. You're hiding the fact, though, that you've been throwing them back all night. Well, and I'm continuing because it's Oscar night. I'm taking a break. Taking a break. We're going to party deep into the night. You know, the van, whoever's going to the Vanity, the Vanity Fair party, the Jay-Z, Beyonce Oscar party, good for them. Good for them. Good for you. But this is the B.O. Boys party, and it's going all night. Mm -hmm. So let's start off what I think the biggest uh, talking point of the Oscars is going to be. The thing that I think everyone is going to be talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks is the in memoriam tonight yep ended with tina turner yes and the second that in memoriam went off immediately got a message from the great podcast jesus kirk minahan reached out immediately tina turner question mark question mark question mark um you know it, who were you calling, Clayton? Because we were sitting side by side, B.O. Boys Oscar party. I was yelling one name. You were yelling another name. Who who did you think it was going to be tonight? Well, I had, I mean, I had William Friedkin. That was something that Kirk had said. And I thought, you know what? This guy is a huge director, exorcist. He did French Connection. Mm -hmm. the, 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 Hollywood royalty. Yeah. I mean, how do you not go with him? And, and it got later and later yeah. in the memoriam. And we were screaming at each other. We were screaming at each other. And I was like, it's got to be. It's got once Alan Arkin goes down. Yeah. Once, you know, Norman Jewison was early. Yeah. So he's out. Uh, Ryan O'Neill. Ryan O'Neill, which was an option early, early. Ryan yeah. Alan Arkin going out early in this in memoriam. That's a big one. That's like a number one seed going down. Yeah. In the in March Madness, yeah, yeah, that that's a big one, and um, I listen. I thought as it went further along, I thought that I my pick was going to be it, Tom Sizemore. I, I really thought, and once I called the snub for that, I thought there's he's not even going to show up. I mean, he might have been in that list at the very end. He might have got snubbed from that list. We are going to have to different names that were on there. We're going to have to forensically look at that list yeah. and see if he's on that. But but I thought he was once freaking went. I thought I got it. Tom Sizemore has got it because I was yelling Sizemore. I mean, honestly, from the red carpet, yeah. from before the oh yeah yeah like I started, I was just on this couch yelling Tom Sizemore. Yes. Made more sense once the in memoriam started. Mm -hmm. But once freaking went out i was like it has to be size more yeah and it was tina turner it was the star of mad max first mad max movie beyond thunderdome yeah. and she was the mayor in last action hero yeah she was right she was but not known for her acting no no I, here's the thing a lot of lot of lot of music on the soundtracks though. Yeah. I think that's huge as well. And giant star, you know, possibly the most famous person in the immemorium, right? I mean, just in terms of known, yeah. But known worldwide, of yeah, course. Not known for movies. Here's what I think happened. And I think you see this a lot. You saw that the year when Sylvester Stallone didn't win Best Supporting Actor for Creed is sometimes someone is just too abrasive. And maybe not liked, and I think that caught up to William Friedkin. Uh, Friedkin? I, I think he's he's not a Paul Schrader level, okay. but I think Friedkin is a guy who's been known to be prickly. Yeah. And I think that caught up to him tonight at the Academy Awards when he didn't get last for Immemorium. Well, both of our snub calls, you called Matthew Perry as a snub because he was famously snubbed at the BAFTAs, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I thought Andre Brower would get snubbed here he did not and i'm happy and i'm happy here's a bigger problem with the in memoriam it was shot terribly 
Yeah. The way they shot it is you couldn't see the names that you need to be showing the screen. The star is not the interpretive dancers. The star is not the orchestra in the in memoriam. And it's not Andrew Bocelli and his sons, maybe son, maybe lover. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? We don't know. We don't know. We don't care. It's all good. Son, lover, both. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Facts, not judgment. Right. Or, right. or questions, not questions, not judgment. So I couldn't see these names. So I'm freaking out because I'm thinking, am I missing Friedkin? Has he already gone past? And I think, yeah, it just made the big people who did sort of start at the beginning feel like they didn't even get their due. I mean, of course, the, the Carl Weathers got in, which is great. Yeah. Beloved Carl, we Carl Weathers, thank God. Well, here's, I mean, speaking of the Rocky franchise, Kirk pointed out a big one. Burt Young got snubbed. Yes. Burt Young got snubbed. And we love Chenandler Bong. Ms. Mm -hmm. Miss Chenandler Bong. And uh, Matthew Perry, we're glad he got on there. Mm -hmm. But you're snubbing one of the co-stars of the Rocky series yes. for, and it's not a one-to-one, -one, Yeah, but the star of Fools Rush In got in and one of the stars of Rocky didn't. We're talking about the movie awards, the Academy yes. Awards. Yes. And Burt Young. Decker. Serving Silverman, right? Is that one of the, his? Uh, serving Silverman, yes. Serving Sarah. Ser serving Sarah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Saving Silverman. Saving Silverman. That's the difference. And serving Sarah, yeah. Yeah, those were the 90s, folks. Um, so yeah, that I think that's the main takeaway of the Academy Awards. They botched them in memoriam. They botched it. They botched it. But, but. I'm going to mea culpa. Okay. Mea culpa, mea culpa. Yeah. Jimbo Kimball, yeah. you, were, you were saying steady hand. Yeah. We need a steady hand. I was pushing back. I said, nobody wants to see this guy. He cries too much. Right. And he did a fantastic job. He did. It, listen. Steady hand. This was not, this was not Billy Crystal coming out in the hand truck, Hannibal Lecter mask on. This was not, you know, Billy Crystal riding a horse. Riding a horse. This wasn't Billy Crystal running from David Letterman in the English Patient plane, you know, in the movie. This, this was not that level. We may never see that again. We'll never see that again. Well, we may, we might see something like that next year because I think we're going to predict you next year's host is. I think most people can predict it, but we'll certify it. Jimbo Kimball did a fine job, steady hand, solid monologue. Things hit. The thing about his hosting is. He's a guy who everyone in the room sees as one of them in the club, playful joshing. This was Bob Hope type hosting where it's like, we're all in the club together. We all come over my house for the catered barbecue and we're all just, you know, jabbing each other and the people get to see us jabbing the way we do at my catered barbecue. Exactly. I mean, we watch this together. I think we're both on the same page. This was, in memoriam, botching aside, Burt Young and Tom Sizemore omissions aside, a fantastic Academy Awards telecast. The Oscars are back. This definitely felt like the first year, and you said this to me, and I agree, the first year since COVID, yeah. that this really felt like an Oscar ceremony yes. in the best way possible. Yeah. And it did help that there was a lot of spectacular films up for awards yeah. here. And big box office films. Big box yeah. office. Because you were the B.O. boys. We always take it back to box office. The fact that Barbie, biggest movie of the year is up and, you know, didn't win a lot, didn't win anything really other than song, but they managed to make it feel like the Oscar telecast was about Barbie. Yes. You know, the, the way that the theatrical and movie industry got to ride off of Barbie's coattails this year, the Oscars telecast didn't give it any big awards, but somehow still made the Oscars telecast feel like the Barbie show. Yes. Um, but you know what? They had to do it. Biggest movie of the year. So Jimbo Kimball said as much yeah. in his monologue. Yeah. Ryan Gosling had a little fun banter with his Fall Guy co-star, Emily Blunt, where he said that uh, the reason why it's called Barbenheimer and not Oppen Barbie is because Barbenheimer was riding Barbie's coattails. Yeah. And that is true. That is true. Because Emily Blunt and listen, they were both scripted to say this, you know, this, this was not them out there shooting on each other, brother, but she made a little jab about how Barbie's not been winning any awards, but then he had the topper, which is 
you don't have our box office. And it wasn't the other way around. The other way around. Box office was the topper. And we were watching that. We both popped. We were both were like, yes, recognize box office. Mm-hmm. Something that I saw a lot of Barbie stars on the red carpet. I mean, star of Barbie, America Ferreira. I saw a couple of interviews where she kept bringing it back to box office. Yeah. Biggest hit of the year. Audiences love Barbie. It shows that in the end, the most important thing is box office. And so Barbie didn't win Oscars, but it won the box office. I mean, let's talk about John Cena. We watched Ricky Sinecki this weekend. Mm-hmm. And wish it would have been theatrical. If that movie was theatrical next weekend, next weekend is a weekend where nothing's really opening next weekend, Friday, March 8, uh, 15th. You know, the 22nd is Ghostbusters, 29th is the collab with Godzilla and Kong. If Ricky Sinicki was opening this Friday, we've seen this film and coming off of John Cena's show stealing nudity performance on the Oscars tonight, best bit of the night easy i think of ricky sinicki was opening this friday and he was able to say that before he presented the award while nude that's a movie that could open 17 million dollars based off of this oscars performance from john cena yeah uh it was his bit was the highlight of the night where and it was a ceremony where all the bits worked yes. and there was never really long sweaty bits. It was all very concise. Get in, get out. Here's something else box office related. I want to bring up from the Oscars. Godzilla minus one, one virtual, one uh, uh, visual effects. Sorry. You know. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a raw feed. Fuck it. We're doing it live after the Oscars. Come on. So Godzilla minus one, won an Oscar tonight and their crew of visual effects artists, Went up there. They're all holding Godzilla dolls. Cute as can be. Yeah. And, and they're, they're overjoyed. overjoyed. Gave, gave a, a nice, nice speech. speech. Everyone liked it. They're all. Remember the, the guy gets the mic and he's like, "Could you hold my Godzilla?" Yeah. Which is that's got to be on a T-shirt. Could you hold my Godzilla? Hold my Godzilla. It's the new hold my beer. Yes. Yes. Hold my Godzilla. So people are watching that and they're seeing, oh, Godzilla won an Oscar, and everyone's holding Godzillas. And then you're seeing the commercials, Godzilla X Kong collab. Collab. And I think for the average person, which of course the B.O. boys are not, you know, coastal elites, we know that Godzilla minus one Japanese production has nothing to do with this series of films that has come to Godzilla X Kong collab. Mm-hmm. But the average Oscar viewer, your Joe Lunch pal, your Susie Crochet, your, your Plain Billy, your Earth Dog, to them, they're just thinking, oh, Godzilla just won an Oscar, and now there's a new Godzilla in theaters in two weeks. Must be the same crew. Oscar-worthy crew. And so I think tonight, the fact that the movie opens in two weeks, obviously if it opened six months from now, it wouldn't matter. But it's opening in two weeks. I think it gets a boost from seeing that Godzilla crew win an Oscar, hold up toy Godzilla, say Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla. And then you see, oh, it's that plus Kong in a collab. I think when we get to it, that's adding millions to the box office opening weekend. Yeah. I mean, I think once they see the actual product, Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a steep drop uh, because the effects on it look terrible Mm -hmm. as opposed to this Oscar worthy effects, which were done for Godzilla minus one. But I will say boots on the ground that I went to see Love Lies Bleeding Friday morning at 10 a.m., like a normal person would with a friend of the show, someone I see a lot of movies with Mm -hmm. who has a one of B.O. baby. Want to be a toddler now. Want to be a toddler, I guess. Doesn't roll off the tongue as well, Mm -hmm. but the booties on the ground. I can still say booties on the ground. Mm -hmm. Loves Kong. Mm -hmm. Obsessed with Kong. Not, I mean, Godzilla. Sure. We'll watch. Kong is the dude. Right, right. And so if this younger generation is into Kong, that's big. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there is, there is a contingent of youngsters mm-hmm. who are Kong crazy yeah. because Kong does a Kong is our Godzilla. Kong is the American Godzilla. Mm-hmm. And I think this young boy, I will say boy okay. is into the glove. Cause now Kong has a glove. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, this is the target audience for this movie. Right. Is three year olds to fifteen year olds. Right. And then older people will see it as well. One more thing on a couple of things on the Oscars. I think we alluded to it earlier. I think based on his performance tonight presenting with the Field of Dreams bit, John Mulaney will be your host of the Academy Awards next year. Could we could we confirm that here? Put it in the books. He, here here's what I so say first to break at the BO Boys. John Mulaney will host the spring twenty twenty five Academy Awards. And you know what? I I mean, there's so many reasons to be excited. Uh, about the box office. We've talked about it in the, the last several weeks about Dune 2 and its young stars. And now we're going to get a new young Oscar host who is going to bring this show back to the forefront. And if you have these young stars making non-superhero movies that get nominated... And they're all at the Oscars together. And then you've got this host who's coming out firing. Right. This is a new era for Hollywood, yeah. right? Because you, you don't have a TV host doing the Oscars. Steady hand. Steady hand. hand Work tonight. Steady hand. What was the golden age of Oscars? Billy Crystal movie star and Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg movie star. Thank you so much. Right? And now, John Mulaney's not a movie star, right? Yeah, and probably never will be. Never will be. But- he is a guy that is young and fresh and hot, and he will be a guy that can go hang out with Austin Butler, can go hang out with Chalamet and Zendaya and all those, yeah. right? That's the next generation, and I think Jimbo Kimball hangs out with your Anistons and your Andre Riseboroughs and your Courtney Cox. They, they play uh, 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 – uh, categories and pickleball on the weekends with Jason Bateman and the whole uh, uh, Smartless crew. Right. This is the next generation, right. and make way for that. But, but here's the reason why Mulaney will be allowed to host because he performed tonight, crowd cheered, but specifically the last shot you saw was new Academy Award winner, basically mayor of Hollywood now, Robert Downey Jr. I mean, basically pointed and said. That's him. That's him. Book him. And, and he is and the judge of comedy, obviously, because he believes he's the funniest guy in the room. Now, question. Now that RDJ has his Oscar yes. and he's mayor of Hollywood yes. and Nicholson's the goat, the king, right. the only man who we really want to see sitting down there in the front, front row center, yeah. front row center, is RDJ the new Nicholson? Is that happening? We've been, we've been trying to pick the new Nicholson at the Because it's not Clooney. It's not Pitt. It's not, they don't Leo want doesn't it. want it. Leo, no, Leo definitely doesn't want it. Leo wasn't there tonight. Yeah. Uh, Leo must have got tipped off that Leo Gladstone wasn't winning. Yeah. I, I do think Leo is at a level where, where he's getting that. He's getting tipped off. And I think he knew. And so he didn't go. Price Waterhouse made one call. Yeah. One call. And it was the they one get call. one call to yeah. someone. Yeah, put the tux away. And the thing with Jack, um, and of course you're doing your lifelong tribute to Jack as you're sitting in my in my dining room across from me with, with dark shades on. The shades great. are an homage to Jack Nicholson, one of the greatest stars. Yeah, of all. yeah, and box office star. But he loved being front row center at the Oscars in a way that obviously Leo does not. Mm -hmm. I think Clooney is fine with it, but doesn't love it. Hanks? Just it's not his it's not his thing to be the center of attention in that way and to be genuflected at. He's uncomfortable with that. We all thought maybe it would have been Brad Pitt after he won. After he won, after he won but he, he hasn't, hasn't become that guy. And, and I, I do, do think, think Robert Downey Jr. Jr. is gonna so love well. being that guy. That's the thing. So he might be the guy. I think Robert Downey Jr. is gonna be the new Jack after winning tonight. Congratulations. He won for Oppenheimer in a part that easily could have been cut out of the film and made the film better, but that's besides the point. Yeah. Um You're not a critic, huh? Critic, huh? But I think last thing that I'd want to bring up on the Oscars, the only giant category big, big category that was a toss up going into the night was Best Actress. Mm -hmm. Emma Stone won the Academy Award for Best Actress. And I think that this puts her into a level of stardom that is tippy top tier. She's an A++ movie star now. I mean, poor things for the movie that is. This made over $100 million worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a hit movie in a way that, that 
focus features couldn't make a hit out of the holdovers. But Emma Stone made a hit out of a really crazy movie like Poor Things. She wins her second Oscar. I mean, my take on this is, in the end, the Academy just loved Poor Things and they did not like Killers of the Flower Moon. You know, we both called it early in the night. Once Poor Things won those three crafts categories in a row. Yeah. It won, what, makeup, it won costume, it won production design. And those are categories that we thought Barbie was going to win at least one or two. I think makeup especially was a little shocking because the Defoe makeup was something, but the rest was, how do you make Emma Stone look beautiful? Probably pretty easy. Yeah. But it won those three. And then that made it clear that the Academy, I mean, my prediction is if we ever saw what the order of of what the best picture nominees, how they came in vote wise, four things got second place too. And I think that's really what it came down to for best actress is that the Academy liked four things. They didn't love killers of flower moon. And so Emma Stone was just always winning this thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. And it just puts her into a level of star where I hope, you know, she does her little things with Nathan for you. And that was nice. And it was like almost like a nice little charity movie. Well, his name is Nathan Fielder, not Nathan for you. Yes. His official name is Nathan Fielder, yeah. uh, but best known as Nathan for you. But she did that. And that was sweet of her to do that show. But let's just hope she sticks to big movies because she is a star who can make box office out of small things, poor things. More things. And, and I, I think, think with, with this Oscar, Oscar she, she just graduates, graduates into a level where she, she is just such a headliner now. Let's, let's let her make some money at the box office. That's it. Before we get to the box office, quick hits, yeah. good things that happened, zone of interest, winning sound, yeah. should have. Yeah. Michael Keaton yeah. in, in, the, in, in the front row reacting to Schwarzenegger and DeVito, especially DeVito, mm -hmm. calling him out as Batman. Yeah. Keaton just having that great grim look on his face saying, bring it on. I mean, if anybody could be the, I would want to be the Jack Nicholson. It's Keaton. I know Keaton's not as iconic, so it wouldn't happen, but he's a guy I would love to see them just show in the audience reacting to yeah. things. That would be awesome, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. Boy in the Heron. Okay. I want to be a boy, Jason. Read it. Email from an hour ago. Hell yeah, the boy in the heron won. Let's go. Wanna be oh boy, Jason. Damn right, let's go. LFG. LFG. Does this, is this another, is this yeah. another nail yeah. in the coffin of superhero? I think 100%. 100% because this is the Academy voters. They got their ballots and they're checking off, oh, I want poor things to win. And Oppenheimer, this important movie, and then when it got to Best Animated Feature, they hovered next to Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And voting. I'm not voting for a goddamn superhero movie yeah. right now. I'm voting for Robert Downey Jr. who just escaped all this bullshit. I'm, I'm voting for Christopher Nolan who, who couldn't run further at this point from these movies. Yeah. You can't go back. And I think tonight was just another... Smack in the face and yell in the coffin, dirt on the coffin for these superhero movies. I mean, one of Mulaney's jokes that just destroyed in his set was when he uh, saying famous uh, quotes. He said the famous quote from Madam Web. I mean, it is a punching bag, Spidey cartoon, got smacked in the face by a real artist, Miyazaki. I mean, could in good conscience, who are these Academy voters, you know, these. 88-year-old hairdressers who get one producing credit in the 70s and still get to vote, they could not bring themselves to vote for a fighty cartoon over a Miyazaki yeah. movie. It'd be and and Because they're asking their their grandkids or their great grandkids right. what do you what do you like? And they're like, Miyazaki's a god. He's yeah, yeah. he's he's a master yeah. of what he does. Well, they're saying is Freddie Fazbear nominated the 88 year old hairdresser who's a producer says no and then they say okay well then vote for Miyazaki yeah. if Freddie Faze Bear is not nominated then you know that's choice A Matt Pat choice two mm -hmm. then Miyazaki Spider Matt Pat not not nominated for best supporting yeah not curious not uh, too short of screen time we I, I don't think he ever had a chance to be nominated but 
him, Freddie Faze Bear, one of the flaws of this telecast was get them in there as presenters. Yeah. You know, get we had Pacino instead of Freddie Faze Bear, which is what we called. Yeah, and I listen, we love Michael Corleone. I think Freddie Faze Bear would have done an equal job reading Oppenheimer. Uh, agreed. Yeah. So we'll leave it at that. Freddie Faze Bear, Pacino, same level in terms of reading a uh, card out of an envelope. Thank you.